Hey there, Internet. R. Felix Finch here, and welcome once again to Underground Lucha Things, the Lucha Underground podcast where I, somebody who has never watched the show, go through and experience the show for the very first time. But I'm not alone. Joining me on this Lucha adventure is the one, the only, from the Isle of Hawaii, Angie, a fan of Midcard Mana. Angie, how you doing? I am good. Thank you again for having me on this uh, Lucha journey. Always great to have you on this Lucha journey. And we're talking about episode, season one, episode 30, Submit to the Master. From June 3rd, 2015. And this show opens up with Chavo in Dario's office, warning Dario that Black Lotus has been trained by Dragon Azteca. And as the Guerrero is only loyal to the highest bidder, Chavo asks for around-the-clock protection from Mexico instead of, you know, large sums of money. And Dario agrees. And afterward, Dario asks what Chavo really wants. And it looks like there's shenanigans afoot. So we saw that last time he said that he would, uh, in exchange for help from Dragon Azteca, he would protect Black Lotus. And that looks like immediate betrayal. I, I, what's going on here, Angie? Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's definitely very questionable. But then again, Chavo, especially in Lucha Underground, has proven that you can never really tell where his loyalty lies. I mean, he is a man who looks out for number one before anyone else. So definitely interesting to see how things are going to go. And interesting to note that he declined the money and was just like, just protect me from Mexico, man. So Yeah, well, we know how them cartels are, bringing their crimes and stuffs. But, <laughs> I mean, in this case, they'd be bringing vengeance since Chavo's the one that committed crimes. But we start off with Jack Evans versus Argenis. And Dario comes out and with a, a hot diss track for the year saying that, you know, you know, Jack Evans had a cool debut, but he's still lost. And Argenis has not been very impressive. So why should we care about either one of them? So to make this match actually interesting... The, the winner will get one of the seven medallions. And again, this is better than the one in seven chance they would have had in that other match. So this is a 50-50 shot of walking out with a piece of medallion that will grant you power in some way. We don't know yet. They haven't really emphasized that. And there's great technical work between both of the guys. Again, we mentioned last time, Jack Evans, part of the heart, did not know that. But yeah, of course, he'll be able to have a very impressive showing. We have the, them work both inside and outside on the action. And it makes it really hard to car, call who the winner will be. But damn, is it cool when uh, Jack Evans uses that backslide with the rolling clutch for the pin <laughs> and win. Uh, how'd you like this, Angie? I mean, definitely very interesting remembering seeing more of Jack Evans in Lucha Underground. Uh, especially now because he is uh, teaming, as we all know as the hybrid two with Angelico in AEW. So yeah, it's been it's been fun being like, oh yeah, remember remember Jack Evans here. Cause I, I remembered Angelico much better than I remember Jack Evans uh, from Lucha Underground. So it's, it's like a rediscovery. Nice. And and uh, we go into the locker room where Delavar Davari is Letting Big Rick know that they have a trios title match tonight, as long as they're able to find a third. And while Big Rick is recommending his cousin, the Mac, out comes Cage, just beat the daylights out of him, and say, you know, why would they want you when they have me? So he leaves Matt, the Mac lying, and uh, yeah, Cage is going to be their partner <laughs> instead. And you see Big Rick just look down at him, all disappointed. Oh, yeah. That hurt me because I, I love Willie Mac. Who doesn't? Uh, so so just being like, oh, man, remember when Brian Cage was the, a big hulking machine heel instead of instead of the lovable kind of face that we had in Impact, and now, now he's back to being a big hulking machine heel in AEW. So, you know, full circle, I guess. Full circle. <laughs> Apparently so, and we find Black Lotus in the locker room. As well, and she lets Chavo know that Dario's agreed to let her compete, and her first match is tonight. She seems a little suspicious, 
And she's correct as she's able to fend off an attack from Chavo from behind. And she even she's even able to take out both of the crew with some really hokey, really hokey looking uh, fights. But she's reeling as uh, Chavo attacks her from behind with a pipe. And he bashes her once more and pulls out handcuffs. So uh, with a twist, dum dum dum. Yeah, who knows who knows what could come next. Also, yeah. Chavo, that dirty guy. I and I agree that the this specific fight scene as it were was kind of hokey, but any chance to get to see some Black Lotus in action for me is is a thrill. So, I was I was still pleased with it. I have lots of fond memories of being just a huge mark for Black Lotus throughout this whole Lucha, the first time I watched Lucha Underground. So it just, it, it gives me, it, it just gives me joy in my heart every time. <laughs> yeah, and uh, to get back into some action, some not hokey action, we have Delvar Davari, Big Rick, and Cage taking on Son of Havoc, Ivelisse, and Angelico for the trio's championships. Ivelisse is still on those crutches coming out with a cast on and Ivelisse actually at one point gets annoyed and just takes a seat next to the stairs since nobody's tagging her in. Meanwhile, we do get to see that Navari isn't really presented as a technical contender. They're more focused on the power of Big Rick and Cage and what they bring to the fray. And again, commentary keeps emphasizing how much of a bitch, their words, not mine, Ivelisse is. And though she does finally relent and move herself closer to the team... Uh, when Davari goes to attack her on the outside, uh, on the apron, he's distracted, and Tejano comes, knocks out Big Rick, and allows Angelico, Angelico to do the heavy lifting while on attacks, and Son of Havoc wins with a shooting star press on Davari. So they retain their ta- trio's yeah. titles. Yeah, no, I was stoked. Uh, I'm, I was also stoked for that. Uh, Tejano appearance slash interference slash gate crashing because uh, I, I like Tejano. This rewatch, I like Tejano even more than I did the first time because at first he was presented, you know, like the nemesis of Alberto Del, or El Patron. And I was like, oh man, I actually, I, I actually kind of like Patron. And then I found out that he was a garbage person. So. Now, even more so, just I love, love Tejano the second time around. Uh, yeah, interesting that Ivelisse was upset about, and I get it, she was upset about not being tagged in, but it's sort of like, girl, you on crutches, you know. If you, if you take the loss here, it's still going to suck, you know what I mean? And they will, these are, these are opponents that will absolutely exploit the fact that you're on crutches to steal that, to steal that win from you and get those belts. So I would, I would stay far away too, because that makes it like, it's an obvious easy target. So yeah, that was, that was my opinion. I like Ivelisse. I like this trios team. Uh, The tension I felt was weird because it's sort of like, well, yeah, no, you're the, you're the one that they will target. You should stay the hell away because you're the one that's injured. Just saying. As a as a girl that's that tries to be tough too, you know, it's a it's a rough time, but just it you could lose it for your team, man. So Yeah. Uh and we see that Chavo brings back Black Lotus into Dario's office with help from the crew. And Dario says that he has a spot for her across from his brother, so he never gets lonely again. And I do no- notice, uh, I've mentioned Kill Bill a lot with her, and uh, even in this segment with her, they're using that, like, Kill Bill snap zoom. No, they only added the... <laughs> That'd be even better. Like, man, I've, I might have to try to do that for this one, just to, just to see how that works, but... It, I like I like I like that the character is somewhat stylistic here, and we're gonna be able to get to see more hopefully. Yeah, I'm I'm just excited for all the all the coming Black Lotus stuff that you're gonna eventually see. It's it's 
with either, with every new reveal, I'm just like, oh, I can't wait until this next thing happens, so then this this can happen, and maybe we can start talk a little bit more about this and that. So, yeah, always a treat. More Black Lotus stuff for me. And then we are now in our main event: Pentagon Junior versus Sexy Star in a submission match. Ooh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pen- First off, Pentagon Jr. jumps on the mic to declare that Sexy Star will be a sacrifice for his master. But Sexy Star attacks Pentagon Jr. from behind, and uh, those strikes start the match. They quickly switch to a ground-based, like, true wrestling format. This And there's a very awesome submission that Pentagon does, where uh, he holds Sexy Star upside down in kind of a cloverleaf while she's suspended mid-air on his thighs. I, I thought that was... Awesome. It would have been even great if it continued into a driver, but probably very unsafe. Uh, Sexy Star eventually, though, does get Pentagon Jr. in a deep single leg grab. One of my that's probably my favorite submission. It's also like the only submission I've actually used in real life in a fight. And and it looks like Sentica, uh, it looks like she hasn't done the rights. And suddenly Superfly is out there in his best early USO makeup. <laughs> if you notice the. <laughs> that paint job looks very early Usos just without the color and like uh, just suddenly he kicks sexy not kicks he hits sexy star he starts attacking her allowing a pentagon to hit her with a package pile driver and then a surfboard with a very deep stretch by uh, cranking the neck back so she submits and pentagon junior wins this as Pentagon Jr. starts to set up to break Sexy Star's arm, Vampiro actually is overcome and gets up and gets in the ring to stop him. The two stare each other down. The crowd is chanting for Vampiro, but Vampiro just walks out, and that would be the end, but no. Post-credits, we go backstage, and we get Vampiro facing the mirror in the locker room. You hear the voices in his head, which, again, is kind of a... Disturbing now that we know he's suffering with uh, dementia and all. <laughs> like, we're starting to hear the voices, like hearing everybody's, like the accolades, praise for him. And he starts hitting his head against the mirror, breaking it. It's getting very dark. We're getting some inverted colors, and that's how we go out. Very cool ending to this show. Uh, the match was one thing, but a very cool ending. I loved it. Angie, let me know what you think of this match and about the show as a whole. Uh, this match has two of my f- favorite Lucha Underground stars on the two opposite sides, of course, Sexy Star. The never say die uh, kind of kick-ass chick underdog faced, which I always appreciated. And Pentagon Junior Cero Miedo Heel. And that in of itself was already satisfying. And then seeing that back and forth, and it was, to me, it was cool that it was the mission match because it kind of allowed us to see a little bit more of Sexy Star. You know, she has a lot of offensive moves for sure, but we never really see her do much of that submission. And especially with Pentagon Jr., his whole arm breaker, and then now we got to see that surfboard, you know, definitely showing off different aspects to these two really talented performers. And then, of course, the addition of Vampiro, who is a literal living legend of wrestling. Uh, very, very interested to see how this coalesces, what this story pans out to be. And, of course, that that end segment with Vampiro being very um, Twin Peaks in the 90s. With minus the house, Annie. Have you ever watched Twin Peaks? I have watched zero Twin Peaks. Uh, like, I had to switch to this camera because I just wanted you to see the confusion on my face as I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, like, uh... for, for those those of those of the of the wrestling world that will watch this that also know Twin Peaks, uh, when I watched Twin Peaks after this, so I watched Twin Peaks after I had seen uh, Lucha Underground. And to me, it was very much like, huh, it's kind of like what Vampiro did rather than the other way around. So <laughs> definitely, uh, I don't know if it was intentional, 
but it left an impression on me. You know, and of course, Vampiro is just excellent. I, I, and seeing that inner demons, his conflict with doing that, going back into the ring and all that, just very meaningful. And like you mentioned, especially knowing what we know today about Vampiro adds a whole level of significance and a whole level of just depth and emotion to it that I totally did not get or did not have the first time I watched Lucha Underground. Yeah, and again, this is a very... Uh, I agree with you very much. You know what? Now that you say Twin Peaks, I've never watched Twin Peaks, but I could say it does seem very David Lynch. I can confidently yeah, say yeah. that. I've never seen Twin Peaks, but I have seen David Lynch stuff, and yeah, I, I agree. Looks very similar. Um, I've just... I absolutely uh yeah i have i absolutely love this i think they're doing great things with the episode uh, i am getting a little i am getting uh, a little tired of some people just like there really seems to be no rhyme or reason to who gets a championship match and why but you know what i'm gonna take that with a uh, massive tablet of salt because this show is all about the story and the story continues it's done very cool. I'm loving the way it's shot. I want to know more about this whole Black Lotus thing. Uh, I like that they're bringing back in Chavo. This is... Yeah, this was overall a very good Lucha thing. But you know what, Angie? I know you've got some things to do. So let them know where they can find you. All right. I am part of two shows based off of Hawaii. The first one is Midcard Mana. And both of them are on YouTube. We've got Midcard Mana and Valley Isle Collective's Ringside. Midcard Mana, a little bit more serious. Valley Isle Collective's Ringside, a little bit sillier. And you can find me on social media at Fumiko Mega. And you can find me here, youtube.com slash Frisco Flame. You can find me on the internet as R. Felix Finch or as Frisco Flame. You go to friscoflame.com, buy my shirts. I actually have a new one coming out that uh, I haven't put up yet. But Angie, I'm going to send you a uh, copy of the... Unless you're using your phone, unless you're using your phone to record this, I will. I've sent you a copy of what the new shirt slash pin will be, and yeah, that you can find that soon. But you know what, guys? Also, um, things are going down over at Angie's side of the world. So next week we might only release a Friday episode. We'll have to see how that goes. There's just. Uh, a lot of stuff going on when you, you know, work, when Shit's you work crazy as, in Hawaii <laughs> <yeah>. right now. <laughs> so, if so, I apologize for a delayed episode, but promise to make it up to you. But join us next time when we're here with more underground lucha things. <laughs>